I said, okay. So I was like, okay, so let me think in my mind. I'm saying, do I make a decision to wait or to say yes? And so I think he saw me kind of going through the emotions. <laughs> and he said, and if you, you know, if you don't uh, really want to move no. forward... <laughs> I do have other numbers. I do have other options. I said, wait, 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 that's what he said. I said, well, I see that you came to Atlanta. You've been texting me and calling me and sending photos and all of that, talking about, you know, the dog, the cat, the everything. Oh, well, but you well, have other options. I had done huh? this. I'd been okay. married some 50, 40, 50 years. I didn't know what to say. Every second that escapes without you here with me Keeps my heart anticipating till I finally see when I made my vows, I told God that I was gonna take care of this gift. All my life I've been waiting for you, girl. You know I've been praying for you. Been writing these love letters to you. So I fight for that future in the present. That's you know what I'm saying? That was good, to the ones who found love For the whole band new beginnings From heaven above I await my future wifey I pray that it won't be too long Too long Every second that it's Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. I'm your host, LaTara Star Whitfield. Listen, are you still shacking up with us? If you're still shacking up with us, can we get a commitment? Hit that subscription button and subscribe. Make sure you turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified about upcoming episodes. We're on the road of hitting a half a million subscribers. Make sure you subscribe and do your part. Uh, also, make sure that you hit that like button so other people on YouTube can be notified that this episode exists. Just do our part. We're going to have an amazing time. Season eight, we've been having some amazing guests share their beautiful journeys of love. And today we have gospel royalty in the building. Let me tell y'all something. If it's ever been an uh, episode that I've been so excited about, it's today's episode because I love sitting at the feet of wisdom. Ah, and these people are powerhouses in my industry. So without further ado, welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast, Dr. Teresa Harrison Jackson hey. and Don Jackson. How you doing, King? Hey. Fantastic. How you doing, Queen? All right. We're in this thing now. <laughs> we are. Let me tell you something. Um, last year at the Stellar Awards, I was afforded the opportunity to do the Dear Future Wifey podcast as, uh, at Stellar Plus. So thank y'all so much for having me there. And I was able to meet y'all. And at that time, y'all were engaged. That's right. And then the month after, y'all got married. Exactly. How does married life feel? Wonderful. When you say wonderful, why? Because it is a place of honor. It is a place of, you know, the Bible says that he that finds a wife, not a woman, uh -huh. but a wife, finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. So it is a great season to to be able to bless somebody's life as a wife. Well, let me ask you this, oh, oh, oh Bishop Don Jackson. Uh, <laughs> now I'm a bishop. Yeah, I'm a major bishop I'm today. A major bishop. whole bishop. So she said she became your favorite factor. Did you feel favor entering your life after you said I do? Uh, absolutely. No question about it. And uh, it felt great, you know, when we were, uh, uh, she was uh, my fiance. It started with, oh, she's your girlfriend, yeah. when she would come on some of our productions. And I said, I don't like that girlfriend. <laughs> so uh, we were, I think, in, in Jamaica, and that's when I proposed. It felt so much better calling her my fiancé than my others, others calling 
her my girlfriend. Hold on, King, because I love what you talk about because you operate like I operate. I said that I would go from friend to fiance with my purpose partner because I'm too old to be talking about my girlfriend. Like I got exactly. I got sons exactly. and we can't be on the same level talking about we got girlfriends. <laughs> like that's just that's real basic to me. Well, you know what happened was we were doing uh, our our first annual Black History Honor Show uh, and we were on the set in Nashville and they were looking at her like, oh, uh, she's his girlfriend. That's why she's working on this. You know? mm-hmm. and, and and the rumors started coming back. And that's when it started. And I'm saying, well, you know, I, I guess that's what they call you if you're not <laughs> engaged. <laughs> so, so let me let me take this to another level. <laughs> and at that time, how long had y'all been dating? Well, not that long. Now, that's an interesting story in itself. We've known each other for some 35, maybe 40 years ago. Right. And I was not one of her favorite. I was, uh-huh, yeah. Because I was married. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's, that's not why. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's not why no. he wasn't my well, favorite. <laughs> well, she has, of course, Gospel Today. Yeah. She had a, had a show uh, the uh, Heritage okay. Awards, Gospel Heritage, which we're going to change to the Stellar Heritage Awards. Okay. Cool. But anyway, that's another story. Are you story. in agreement with that? Are you in agreement well, with that? Of course. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, yeah it, that's our show. That's our, uh, and so I, I guess I didn't respond to uh, help her with some of her activities then. And I was focused on what we were doing a lot in, in production. And um, so it was high pass and go. And she always claimed that she got tickets to our show, but we put her in the back. Now, I Y'all don't handle tickets. Does. I know it. I don't handle tickets. Y'all know how, everybody yeah. know how to I is. don't yeah. handle tickets. <laughs> <laughs> so no, she, I don't handle tickets. He don't handle tickets. He owns so the whole could, show. Right, yeah. But he exactly. can't get you the tickets. You're right. He can't give me a good seat. <laughs> well, well, I had other things, a lot of other things to do other than tickets. And purposely, <laughs> I got away from that. So uh, the deal was that uh, she would call, I guess. My producer would put her in the back. And when we had other stars looking to sit in certain places, they would have her stand up and leave and go to another place. <laughs> that was, movie oh around. My that was horrible. It was uh, horrible. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> she reminds me of that all the time. <laughs> so uh, that's how it started. And then when my wife passed away uh, some seven years ago, um, uh, and I started, you know, just visualizing, praying on what would I like to come into my life? Now, this, now, is, this is what I love right here. Now, here we go. Unpack uh, this. <laughs> this is God uh, ask, uh, answering prayer. Yes. And I'm praying, meditating one morning. And he says to me, I said, I ask, God, this is, this is lonely. Uh, what's next for me in terms of a relationship? And um, just praying. And then the name... Teresa, this is the truth, came to me. And I, yeah. I woke up, you know, opened my eyes, and I said, Teresa, the only Teresa I know <laughs> is Teresa Harrison. So I, I jumped up, and I, a month or two before that, we were at Dr. Mary Beth Gentry, who runs the choir and choruses, uh, at her annual event. And we took a f- selfie. She took a selfie, mm-hmm. like, you know, you know, posing. And I, so I said, well, wait a minute, let me see what that looks like. And I went over to my phone, it was on my phone, and I said, wow, what? And then I said, God, how did I miss that? <laughs> <laughs> my wife had just passed. How did I miss that? So, so I, uh, uh, I called, and she was out of town on one of her uh, uh, trips to Israel. And... Um, uh, uh, she answered, and uh, then we started exchanging uh, photos of the fun she was having and all of that. And then I said, you know, boy, you guys are having a lot of fun, and you look great. <laughs> there you go. Shot to see, shot. See, there it is, uh, Don. Well, you know, I, 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 so I hadn't done day, this in you know, some I'm 40 on the, years. I'm on I the hadn't trip. done, uh, <laughs> and, and I hadn't been gone monopolize. after anybody. Mm-hmm. And so I was not familiar with how to flirt. <laughs> How to come on? 
how to get, get a woman's attention. So I'm just, I, I, I'm just saying things that I think are, you know, can get your attention in a mild way. Uh, you know, not, hey, baby, I want to, I want to work with you. I want to. I, I was very smooth. I thought I was very smooth. And then she finally. Got, now this is when she is in Europe. She's away. I'm in Chicago. And we begin to connect, and her friends all of a sudden said to her, I think Mr. Jackson has something else on his mind for you. <laughs> That's how it started. And, and, so, and, so, and so when he gave you compliments, did you see that he was flirting, or you just saw it as Oh, just, yes, I definitely knew he was flirting. Not at first. Because, no. first not of all, first, she she anybody, first. anybody who knows Don Jackson, who has ever encountered him, knows that he is straight and to the point. He gets yes. what he wants. He's get he's in and he out. <laughs> okay, look, you know? don't be shocked. You and, know? <laughs> and that's it. And he's not like, hey, how you doing? That's not Don Jackson. He ain't going to give you all that extra no, pleasantries or whatever. No, 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 no. And so I was like, oh, so he has time to text me every day. <laughs> oh. That was my approach. And then, my then approach. he's like, well, send me some pictures. Uh -huh. And I'm like, I sent him the group picture. He's like, I don't want <laughs> and that. I said, you don't want that? No, I don't want that. <laughs> We said, well, so, let show me, see show me what, you. how you're enjoying it. <laughs> he said, how you enjoy it. And then, way I'm saying it, uh, she went from the group uh, with whatever she was wearing. She went from the group to her. She was posing. Uh, she had a different outfit on. She had makeup. It was, it was like, whoa, you, this is working. <laughs> So you knew at that point he was shooting the shot. Oh, yeah. I knew he was shooting the shot. Did yeah. you have interest at that point? Well, so, you know, as women, we evaluate because, you know. Here it goes. Too, Here it goes. Now. We, we're too mature for games, you know. Uh -huh. So I evaluated that, first of all, this is a great guy. He's, you know, straight yes. out and he's about what he's about. Yeah. He's a good businessman. He's an intellectual. He's a creator. He's an entrepreneur. He's successful. Um, and he's not about games. Good. So, um, yeah. So you thought of that while well, you were sending them pictures back. Uh -huh. you, picking, you You took about 800 well, selfies, and then you said, I'm going to send this one, I'm going to send this so one. So now, you know, the whole pretense, and he didn't say this, <laughs> but the whole pretense was, you know, I want to do a show with you. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, we got to put that back in there. So, well, because she was in television, yeah. you know what I mean? So he says, <laughs> I want to do a show with <laughs> you. A little bit. And um, so, you know, he's outlining all this stuff, sending me all these emails about the show that he wants to do with me. Well, you don't do a show looking like you came out of the desert. You know, you got to put some makeup on. So I'm sending oh, yeah. him pictures and I'm looking like a person who might be on TV. Yeah. Right? And uh, yeah. Don, were you really interested in doing the show? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 didn't no. do the show yet. Yeah, yeah. Have you done the show yet, Don? We hadn't done the show, but it was, I think it was like, you know, she had Gospel Today magazine. So I said, made it simple, Stellar Today. <laughs> Stellar Today show, on because I'm in television, so that made a lot of sense. Yeah. You know, there was CBS yeah. in the morning and all the morning shows, we didn't have that. And we are still that. talking about that now. Yes, so it we're wasn't still just talking about it. Trying to get your attention. All right. But that was we're a natural. We're going to do it, right? Yeah, y'all still going to do it, right? Uh, but you <clears> know, that, wasn't that was a whole motivated. Bait switch, was it, Odile? <laughs> no, it wasn't a big <laughs> switch. Okay, okay. Because you know, it was really God inspired when, when you're praying and then some inspiration, the Spirit starts talking to you and it comes to you. I mean, I don't take that lightly. I really don't. I don't just right. say, oh, what do you mean? Uh, I step out on it and I stepped out on this one. When I got that word, uh, that name, Teresa, I yeah. only I only knew one, and then it that's what started it, and I stepped out and said, "Okay, okay," and I got the message, I got the word, and, and how the long motivation. did it take you from getting that word and the execution of that word for you to say I stepped out? Was that a month later, a week N later? No, when I said stepped out, I immediately went to my phone <laughs> to look at this selfie. And that reinforced it because you Teresa said, How was did like, I "Miss this." You said, <laughs> she was she was hugging me, and she, you know, she here's the selfie, here's the selfie, you know, and she was put that she can really pose, she can really take she you know. take photos. So <laughs> Teresa's exaggerating. I, that's, I stepped, <laughs> oh my I goodness. stepped out immediately, mm -hmm. and then I said, "Yeah." Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes we, we miss it and we get busy and do other things. Uh, and then after I saw that, I called. Now, that's, that, you know, to me, 
uh, that's, you know, leading, letting the Spirit lead you, and um, uh, it did. So, uh, and then I followed up. You know, I kept following up. So how, how are you following up? Were you still trying to talk about the show? Or are you like, hey, I'm interested in you. Can we go on the first date? Well, when she was out of town, I thought that would have been too great, too aggressive to say, yeah. I'm interested in you. So I, I'd start talking about what I do and what I do is television. <laughs> but when she came back, I said, let's go out and have dinner. And... Um, we went out to raise on let the me, river. Let me help you. Go, 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 go. Because, you know, his memory okay, okay, okay. So go. what happened is that he's talking about the show. Well, I'd like to come down. I'd like to look at a studio yeah. where we might shoot the show. Oh, yeah, that's right. Forgot and that. um, let's do dinner after that and so we can talk about everything. I said, mm-hmm. So he comes to Atlanta, you know, he's got his little, oh, by the time, his but, little but, but she had really hat on got, everything. But you two had gotten made up. It was like, whoa. <laughs> That's how I look you know, all the time. Oh, she said, let's be clear. Okay. 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 trying to come out looking my halfway there. <laughs> all right. So I come and I pick him up. We go to the, to the studio. Then we go for dinner. He has arranged dinner. Now, you know, I'm thinking, oh, you know, let me take him somewhere nice in Atlanta. Oh, he has a restaurant. He's already arranged dinner. That's We're out on about. the veranda by the, the little bubbling river. Right, oh, raised on the river. There he, it is. He right. worked Outdoor, it out. Outdoor with separate space. For oh, Atlanta, yeah. So you know. we're like at this little table. And he, so then he's like, listen, because I'm thinking, okay, <laughs> brother, you're going to tell me something. Because I ain't getting ready, you know, just, uh, you know, we back and forth with this show. We're going to do something. So... He's like, yeah, you know, um, I'm single. I'm a widower. And, um, you know, I, I like being in a relationship. I like being married. And, um, yeah, you know, I'm not saying that I want to get married right now, but, um, you know, I'm serious. I'm healthy. I'm, you know, so he's telling me <laughs> he's all. The, he, he, listen, he, said, he, he is going down the list, checking he said, all. I'm the, healthy. Let's be clear. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I look at him. Well, I said that because uh, I was entering uh, my 80th birthday. Oh, okay. You see, some people, you know, take a look at if you're. 80, you know, you're at, you're at the end, yeah. you know, and you're a senior, senior person. So I had to make that clear. <laughs> senior, senior. I, I ain't ready to retire. Uh, I work out uh, and, and all of that to set the stage now. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. But so then you got after some I did. Thing, is what you were saying. That, uh, hey, a lot of life in me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got some things. We got some extracurricular activities we can do. You know, so here you go, Teresa. So then he's saying this. He's laying out this resume. Uh -huh. What were you thinking? I'm thinking, okay. So I get the fact that he's, you know, sharing all the details. I said, okay. So I was like, okay. So let me think in my mind. I'm saying, do I make a decision to wait? Or to say yes. And so I think he saw me kind of going through the emotions. And he said, and if you know, if you don't uh, really want to move no. forward, I do have other numbers. I do have other options. I said, wait, 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 <laughs> I said I want I would love to have a relationship with you. He said, but uh no, I didn't say the but. <laughs> I said, and I do have other opportunities. <laughs> That's what he said. I said, well, I see that you came to Atlanta. You've been texting me and calling me and sending photos and all of that, talking about, you know, the dog, the cat, the everything. <laughs> Oh, well, but you well, have other options. I had done huh? this. I'd been okay. married some 50, 40, 50 years. I didn't know what to say. <laughs> he felt rejection. Uh, he, he, he's that like, pause. He, 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 took, like, he uh, said, hold on, let me tell you something. Don't right. you know I got them? <laughs> right. So, you know, if you reject me, I'm good. I'm good. You know, trying to be all bad with it. I said, yeah, oh, right. Well, but I was smooth. You know, I wasn't. You know, I didn't act like I was from the hood, you know. Uh, he said I was smooth. I, I, was, I was smooth about it. The setting was right. Yes. You know, I, I romanced her. Let me ask you this. Did, did, you, feel, did you feel it romantic? Oh, yeah. He it wasn't really, no professional meeting, huh? It, not, at, none. 
No professional. I, I don't even think he talked about the show. No, I didn't. I, I was like, oh, okay. I mean, really, literally, we sat down. And he was like, look, this is me. I'm this. I'm I bad, love it. I said, oh, okay. I love it. You are serious. Let me tell you the reason why I love that so much is Dr. Uh, Cindy Trim and her husband. That's exactly what they did. They had their first date, and it was... Listen, this is where I'm at. This is what yep, I think. This is yep, what it yep. is. You know what? And this is the thing, because I've been single a long yes. time. And, you know. Because you've never been married? Yes, I've been married. Okay. And, and have the children and grandchildren to prove it. But and then, anyway, so how many years were you single? I'm about 25. Okay. And so the, the thing is, you know, you meet a lot of men, great guys, you know, all of that. But, you know. We're in a season now where people want to test the yep. water. They want to, you know, drink the milk and get the cow, all of that. <laughs> and, you know, you got to, this is a season now where people who are serious about their destiny, serious about their purpose, serious about what they're going to do in life as mm-hmm. a partner, they need to step up. And and really, Don, he was surprisingly uh, forward and you know, it is is the in a sign, nice way. No, no, is, we we get it, Don. You ain't okay. got to add no addendum to okay. it. People, right. It you've was, been out this game for a long time, so you don't understand what she's saying. Yes. And exactly. when, when, the way it's resonating to the audience is saying they 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 cheering for you right now because <laughs> men don't operate with that level of intentionality no more. Like mm-hmm. she's talking about, we're more accustomed to situationships than yeah. than covenant. Yes. And so okay. for you to say, listen, hey, and you said, hey, I don't know how to do this thing, but mm-hmm. what I do know how to do is get married. Right. And that's how. Mm-hmm. How simple it has to get. Yeah. It has to get to that simple. I see you. I want you. I desire you. And I'm going to tell you I want you. Yeah. Instead exactly. of, you Instead know, playing around. Yeah, playing the and, games. And, the, and really the games are to protect you. Yes. It's not to secure her. Ooh, teach. And so teach. when he came to me, he came to me, I want to secure you. And he came and, and got me and he was so intentional about it. And every day he let me know he was thinking about me. He would send me texts. He would call me in the morning, in the evening. And he wasn't obtrusive or disrespectful in any way. He was very respectful. And, you know, it's it's like, I see you, queen. And if you want a king, he got to recognize the queen in you. So that's the part that that really impressed me. You know, it wasn't about what he had or what he had done. All oh, that's nice. But if that's not going to be a part of my life, then all oh, that's just nice. <laughs> you know, I can come to the Stellar Wars and get a ticket. How about that? But now she's but, going to Stellar Wars and she's sitting in the front row. I, I, right. but it, you know what? But the she's thing not was, in the back anymore. I've been at the Stellar Wars 30 some years. 30 some years. And, you know, the thing oh. is that when you come into that covenant kind of relationship, it's a different level. It doesn't matter where you sit it matters who what's in you Teach. and what's between you Teach. and so that's the part where you know i think it's so important that men be men yes and if you are not going to step up and be strong and be, step out <laughs> step off <laughs> i ain't got time for it yeah. yeah so so how long so when did it switch when did it switch from that moment of saying this is what it is and then you got on the same page and said well you know that night it was i think uh september something and of 2022 yes and and um that night you know as i was kind of like then I had to catch myself. I said, no, no, no. This is not that that you've been used to where they want to, you know, kind of holler at you yeah. and all of that. This is a man that's coming to you. He's, you know, substantial, all of those things. And he's stepping up. So I said, yes, okay, let's try it. Let's do it. And how long did that take you? Next day? Oh, no. That night we were like, okay, we're going to do this. Immediately, my brother. So, <laughs> yes. Yes. I mean, it don't take, yes. long. Well, it don't it, take a long I'm time. I'm going to sometimes trauma that women have experienced in the past will delay that. If you mm. let your past determine your future. <laughs> yes. If mm-hmm. you drag all that in. But, you you know, you, I was healed. I yes. was already whole. I was already happy. Mm. I was satisfied with what God had. had healed, whole, and happy. D- and he had put positioned me powerfully for my next. I didn't know when the next was coming, but I was ready for it. And that's why I believe when the Bible says he that finds a wife, a wife is somebody who's secure and who she is. She is just waiting for the husband to show up and for God to send him. When when God sends you a husband, he identifies himself. 
You don't have to just wonder and wander. And that's what immediately hit me. This is a husband. Okay. When God sends you a husband, he identifies himself. That's right. Oh, he that right there preach. Him. That can preach all kinds of ways. He will identify mm-hmm. himself to you. And you have to be in the spiritual realm enough to recognize what he has sent you. Sometimes we don't recognize it because we're so busy in the natural. But because I was in a spiritual space as a wife, then I was able to identify my husband when he came. Mm. So, you know, it's a lot of imposters to the throne. But when you find the one, when God sends the one, you will identify him immediately. Was there uh, in the season of 25 years, Mm -hmm. was there people that you thought was your husband and you experienced heartbreak where you was like, how did I get that wrong? Yes, definitely. How many times that happened? Oh, I can't talk about that right now. You make me twitch. Make me twitch. (laughs) Make you go back and start shaking. Yeah, right? (laughs) No, you know what? Because we, um, as Christian women, many times we live life on the fence of Christian and mainstream, secular. Secular, yeah. You know, we want to be sacred some days and secular some (laughs) days and saved so half the time and unsaved, you know. uh -uh. And, And, you know, to be honest, I hadn't always been that person. Right. I wasn't always secure like that. And so when I when I um, went through those kind of ups and downs, I would just like kick myself and say, why did you do? Why are you in this dumb relationship? Get out of this mess. Yeah. And, you know, you can't make somebody into something that they're not. Teach. And women, we you know, we get these projects and we try to, you know, put nails in them and, yeah. and you know, all of that, tape them together. All <laughs> that. No, if he's not ready for you. Keep it moving. And I found that once I released myself from, from, you know, wanting and just let him find me, I was able to focus on what God showed, gave me to do. And when you do that, a man, will, your husband will find you because you're ready for him. And then he can cover you in all the ways that are, you know, really needed because I, you know, I wasn't like out. Oh, I need a house. Oh, I need a car. Oh, I need. Yeah. To, I wasn't that person. And when a man, you know, that has this kind of substance steps to you, he's not looking for a woman he has to repair and he has to fix and he has to heal. Oh, God. Let the Holy Ghost heal you. The husband is supposed to cheer you. Mm. <laughs> So, that, Teresa, why are you preaching? <laughs> why? That is, I mean, it has just been such a beautiful thing. And and I really, I appreciate, Lateris, the opportunity to share this because what you're doing is so important. We need to know how women, Christian women and Christian men yes. sh- should function in this season. Yes. So, yeah. So, Don, when you looked at her, what did you see? I know you saw all the achievements that she had. You heard the voice of God give you this name of confirmation. But what do you see? Because I believe that when men choose their spouse they're choosing out of purpose and you know it's like a a coach that's trying to build the great team or whatnot and you've been a businessman I know that you're hiring people and you build a team that you feel that can get you you know across the finish line so what did you see in Teresa that brings well, value to your life well first of all I saw her beauty that was <laughs> obvious. Like, fine. but I also saw a leader a strong woman who was not afraid to step out as she had done on Gospel uh, uh, Gospel Today and on the Heritage Award, that's kind of, not kind of, that is tough for a woman to be in this communications business and have to do it on her own uh, and keep it going as long as she did yeah. uh, without the support of a, of a spouse that could, that, where they could work together. And, uh, of course, I had experienced that with my wife, uh, but with Teresa, I immediately, uh, I could see her strength. Uh, she's determined. She's not afraid to uh, step out. And when I met her family, uh, it was it reminded me so much of my family at a younger stage, how she's still connected. She's still grounded to, to family, wanted to meet me. And uh, see what her family thought of me, <laughs> what to call me. So she said, call him Mr. Don, you know. But uh, that was very, very important um, to see that she could handle it. She wasn't intimidated by the people who were around 
me, the you know the celebrities that I know, right? Uh, the things that I do. Uh, uh, she wasn't awed. Uh, she and she was so uh, respectful and graceful to my family and all of those who were around me. Where uh, it just made such a a great impression. How did how did how did how did y'all's families receive each other? Well, you know, it's interesting. Uh, her family uh, immediately. I I I, I like children. I like uh, uh, all of that in terms of growing up. And of course. My family is grown, you know. My yeah. my uh, daughter and my son are in their uh, fifty early fifties. Yeah. Um, so they are established. They had to see who she was coming into my yeah. life. Yeah. So Teresa's family, they were immediately receptive because of um, they could see how happy she was. Good. Uh, and how I treated her. My family, they were cautious because uh, there have been a few. Uh, who have, you know, had other agendas, uh, agendas, yeah, and uh, they question that, and I didn't go forward with a lot of that. Uh, so uh, that <laughs> became Teresa, Teresa, Teresa be knowing where the body's buried. <laughs> what, what, you over there laughing? What you laughing for, Teresa? Mm-hmm. Uh, he is such a diplomat. He is. I can tell how he said. Uh-huh. Yeah, he's like, and well, and they, yeah. I didn't go forward with that. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Teresa okay. be like, boy, that's so hilarious. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You your jokes. politician, your politician, no yeah, doubt. Uh, yeah, he's definitely that. <laughs> well, you know, it's almost you, you, your children can't control at least at my stage your life, you right? Know? Uh, and so I had to let them know and show that this is not a passing fancy here, right? This is real, and so they uh, accepted that that they were uh, at the time my my daughter and. Uh, her her husband and my granddaughter, they were living in my house, uh, and they saw got the message, and they moved out. You know, we couldn't have that. <laughs> um, so and so, it's just that adjustment as you know others, and you can let others lead you or uh, into some things you don't want to. You don't want you don't want to go there right. when they try to dictate lead your life. Right. You know it's all about. And I know that uh, Teresa was God inspired. The Spirit spoke to me about her. So I had no reservations. I didn't need to talk to nobody in terms of what they thought. Good. Uh, I had you know it was what I thought and what I felt and the love that I had for Teresa. Uh, so I didn't have a problem with it. Uh, and sometimes and so that's what, what happens when you're dealing with a man. That's right. You know right. what I'm saying? I don't that's need nobody right. to sign off right. with it. They, they got to go heart. check with the boys. Yeah, I'm going right. to check, <laughs> check out somebody else. What you think about it? You right. don't want married to right. it. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's exactly and right. so I love the fact that you were resolute in your decision, and that's what made her feel so secure. Because as she's saying, she's saying that as a woman, they want to feel safety. They want to feel secure. One of my mm-hmm. first viral videos that I ever received got like 2.1 million views in 24 hours mm-hmm. when I said the number one need for a woman is to feel safe. That's right. And um, it's so unfortunate that especially our African-American women aren't afforded that opportunity right. to feel right. safe, right. and especially they're not afforded that opportunity often to feel safe in the presence of men and for their hearts to feel safe uh, in the hands of a man. And Mm -hmm. so I love that you provided that for uh, Teresa, a woman that is a force to be reckoned with, a woman that has, like you um, have admonished the fact that she's achieved all this success, but she's saying, hey, listen, I don't. I did all this, but I still want to be safe with a man. That's right. I built all this, and you said that. Gosh, it's unfortunate she did that. You know, as a single woman or whatnot. But she's like, I want to mm-hmm. rest. <laughs> Anytime I talk to most successful women, it's not a successful woman I've spoken to that said that they don't want to rest. They like, I do this. I'm making all this money. I'm doing this, but I'm tired. <laughs> you know, I want. <laughs> I want to rest in the. I want to. I want to come home and rest. You know what I'm saying? Right. Well, you know, let me say this. I think there's a different energy that you have for what you do when you're not grinding all the time because you're, you're able to create, you're able to sit back and then think about, Ooh, what would happen if I did this? And, and then you're able to go and do it because you have the foundation. You know, it's like when you step down and there is a foundation there, Yes. you know, then you're not like, Oh, if I don't (laughs) step down the right way, you know, ain't going to be nothing. Right. (laughs) No, it's like, okay, he, he has my back. And I know that if I step out and I do something, 
And if, even if it's not as successful as maybe the past has been, right. I can now move out in different th- ways and do different things. And that is just a beautiful place to live. So, yeah, it's after it's all different. these years you're experiencing that. I am what experiencing does that feel like joy, mm. not not just happiness. But a state of being that is joyful, unspeakable joy there that you feel is. in the soul. Yes, and um, and this is what I talk about. So this is what I mean by y'all being the epitome. I always talk about uh, purpose partners on my podcast, mm-hmm. and I and I talk about uh, I had been married before, and I said I was married for almost ten years, and I said what I desire, what I wish I'd known then, is the importance of a purpose partner, mm-hmm. and when you join purpose with somebody. Um, when I look at y'all and when I met y'all at the Stellar Wars last year, I said, this is this is the epitome of purpose. <laughs> it's like it's like God was fashioning you separate from him where you are running Gospel a Day, one of the biggest gospel magazines mm-hmm. uh, to date. And you've created that. And then you have this king over here creating the Stellar Wars, something that's never been done before. Right. Ever in the history still called the Gospel Grammys. Never been, <laughs> never existed before. Yeah. Right. You created something that's never existed before. He created something that's never existed before and they're both for the glory of God. Mm-hmm. Then all these years go by and he brings y'all together for such a time as this. Yes. When I think about, and I'm trying not to get emotional because I start crying when I just think about <laughs> If y'all were able to do that separately, mm-hmm. independent of each other, right. then what in the world you think going to happen y'all coming together? <laughs> now, that is that is the, the power of God, because one thing that Don, that I always said to him was that, you know, as you said, separately, we were good. We, you know, we did all these things. But when you talk about God putting two together and those two becoming one— mm. It's not addition, it's multiplication. Teach. And that's the power that we have to tap into. Yes. So once we're tapping into that power and and putting everything else where it's supposed to be outside of that, then we're getting ready to see amazing, Great exploits is what the Bible calls it. Great exploits. And one of those exploits immediately happened uh, after we had gotten married. Uh, And I told you about this earlier. I wanted to do a show uh, to celebrate gospel, not gospel, but uh, Black History Museums, African American Museums, because I had been uh, the chairman of the DuSable Museum in Chicago for some 12 years and knew what they were facing. So when I was in Cincinnati and visiting the Procter & Gamble people, they took me over to their uh, National Underground Railroad Freedom Center. Beautiful museum. I've talked about history. And I made the decision there. I said to the director of that museum, we are going to feature you in our Black History Honors segment coming up for Black History Month. And uh, they got excited. Uh, I didn't know who we were going to use to write this document. It was a docu-entertainment. I mean, we had the cameras. We had the artists. Gospel music uh, artists, they loved it to be a part of, of giving a musical tribute. And all of a sudden, I said, I knew of her writing exploits with Gospel Today. So I said, Teresa, you can do this, and what a wonderful opportunity. She wrote it, uh, meaning we coming back into uh, uh, Cincinnati, sitting down with our uh, host, Molly Music, going through all of what the museums, the museum there had to offer. It was a a huge success. Our major sponsor, Procter & Gamble, loved it. And this year, um, she we expanded from one museum to eight. In, one, in and, one year. In one year. And she not only wrote it, she produced it. You see what I'm saying? You know? So, <laughs> you see what you I'm know, saying? The, the, those, you know, that was not an accident because, and it was like, Y'all ain't, boom, married, boom, y'all ain't boom. been married a good year and y'all already doing all that. Six this. months, that's right. <laughs> But, you know, That's the belief it. that I had, and then I saw her work. So I I, I backed away purposely because I do take the lead. On, uh, <laughs> a little bit do. of a control if freak, I'm Don not, Jackson? Uh, no, 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 I'm not a control freak. <laughs> Where no, you get stop that it, stop it, stop it. <laughs> but if I see that there's a, a weakness there, I'm not going to let that happen. Yeah, I'm going to, with the experience that I've had, I'm going to be there to support. Uh, so uh, for me, I... I 
when I thought something was not happening, I kind of backed away, kind of backed away and let her lead. Good. And uh, that means so much because it gave her the confidence. Good. You know, and, and so now she's still learning television now. You know, she, that's a whole tele- different beast. It's a whole different uh, operation uh, and a lot of things there. And uh, but she's willing to uh, take it, take the challenge, move out on it, you know. And that's what uh, I, I like <coughs> strong. Uh, uh, creative uh, people in general. What you about to say, Teresa? No, 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 go ahead. No, you're you, you going to ask something in your spirit. It's something well, no, you know what? Brew it up in your Here's spirit that you want to say. say. Um, for years, you know, gospel today, gospel, the stellar awards. We we know if you're anywhere near the gospel community, we know the gospel is underexposed. One hundred as a genre. Yeah. Um, we're all friends with artists. We're all friends with people who are part of this business. And what we need is a bigger footprint across the media space, yes. whether it's mm-hmm. the Grammys, the Super Bowl, right. or any other space. And that's where I believe God has joined us together. Right. So that, right. you know, I bring an aspect, he brings an aspect, and we respect each other. Yeah, We value each other. We appreciate each other. But together... I believe God is going to do something that is unprecedented. When I say I see it, I saw it when I met y'all, when y'all was just still engaged. I was like, oh, I see it. <laughs> I said, oh, they finna, they finna do something, something brewing. Well, you got to keep praying for Man, us. Man, I'm praying. Because praying, praying, praying. I already see it because I know what y'all both individually have done. Yes. And I know what happens. The Bible says this. The Bible says that one can chase away a thousand and two can set 10,000 demons to flight. That's what you're talking about multiplication. Mm -hmm. Because if you looked at it, you say if one can do 1,000, another one can, so it should be 2,000. Right. But God operates in multiplication Mm -hmm. and you'll do you do five times uh, the, the the exploits of what you could do individually. That's right. And so that's because the number five represents grace. And yeah. so he puts his grace over that thing. And then when he puts that grace over that thing, right he now. does All amazing right, things that you are that you couldn't do by yourself. And so what I'm trying to tell y'all, yes. the Jacksons is what I'm trying to Come tell on. y'all, is that it's Bishop some things Whitfield. about Bishop Whitfield. I'm, I, y'all got me hot and bothered <laughs> right now. So what's about to happen is a great dispensation is about to take place mm-hmm. because the, the authority See, what happened is, is that individually y'all have taken, God has given y'all dominion in entertainment in this, in this, uh, in the sphere of influence that y'all had individually. Yes. So it's a dominion that you have. Oftentimes people feel like they're, they're dominating in a field. And, you know, from a secular standpoint, mm-hmm. we're like, oh, they're dominating in this. Mm-hmm. They did this. But from the spiritual standpoint, God is giving you dominion. Why? Yes. Because the, the Bible says that I will give you dominion over every place your feet treads. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. you tread it in this genre uh, or, or this industry with Gospel Today and, mm-hmm. and, and the TV show that you were about to launch and all that type mm-hmm. of stuff. And then he had dominion in this sphere. And yes. then you bring y'all together and then mm-hmm. now y'all have dominion to take over the earth and one of the gateways is entertainment that's, right. that's one of the highest mm-hmm. influence that the devil has used to try to uh, manipulate people persuade people the entertainment industry in LA is filled with wickedness yes. but he's putting remnants in the earth people like y'all and people like me that said hey if you understand your godly assignment mm-hmm. right, you won't right, take it lightly right. you'll understand that this ain't just something that you're doing for entertainment right. but you're doing it for dominion that's right now, should I tell him you about give him an offering. <laughs> uh, about a project? Yeah, no, give me an offering. Give me an offering. God bless about you. A give me an offering, we know you're rich over there. Are just getting ready to start after seeing this, the Grammys, right? Yes. And having interacted with them because we have the Stellar Awards and Gospel. This was one of the first Grammys that did not have a presence of a gospel music artist on the main stage. Wow, I even think None. of that. You know, I watched it purposely the three hours that it was, and I said, where, where, where are we? We were not there. Country music was there. Uh, Latin music was there. Uh, 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 R&B, no gospel. So at the same time, Teresa is thinking, we got to bring, uh, 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 we, we got to bring the gospel music community uh, together. Uh, together on all sectors in terms of the artists, the record companies, radio, television, uh, and so I immediately stepped out again, wrote a one-page draft called Coalition of Gospel Music, you know, other than the Gospel Music, you know, uh, association, which we know is not a white, a black gospel. Right. Uh, 
which uh, Teresa's getting rid of calling gospel black gospel. <laughs> so this is a project that we, I mean, we, 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 we agreed that something needed to be done. Good. Uh, we, 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 we have a draft, and we're inviting the gospel music community and all those sectors to come together. Uh, we have Black Music Honors coming up in May, and we're going to have them, and we have the Stellar Awards coming up in August. We're gonna. Ha- that's how how we're going to start. Finally, I know what the date uh, is. It's in August. July. Oh, he said. Yeah, he said August. So the, it's in July. Well, the taping is July, but right. the the show uh, the show is in August. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, so we're bringing you know stepping mm-hmm. out, looking at the total industry, how we can make an impact on it, mm-hmm. and they respect. Uh, the work that Teresa has done yes. uh, in gospel and what we have done with the Gospel Music Awards. Um, so these are these are inspired, uh, 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 not coincidence, but God inspired. Uh, ideas that are coming that we can make a difference in this gospel music, and, and that's what I call a Kairos moment. Mm-hmm. That's 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 what's happened. This mm-hmm. this this uh, it just gets me excited. So when you when you sit back and you look at what God is doing, did y'all have like? Do you feel what I'm talking about? Like when oh, y'all definitely. got together, where y'all like this is? I see what God is First doing. First of all, in a million years, you would have not ever convinced me <laughs> that I would be married to Don Jackson. Okay. <laughs> I mean, and never. First of all, <clears throat> he's very, he's very um, kind and very, you know, you know how people are just kind. Like, mm, that's nice. Well, you know, Valentine's but, Day just passed, but he's right? not. I went overboard on all, Valentine's Day. He's not all the with kind the of flowers, guy that's a warm fuzz, oh, oh, the dinner, he's not, he's trying, the he's cards. He's trying to do he's trying, all he's trying, of that. He's trying, he's talking mean, over me yeah, now, y'all. Yeah. Oh, okay. didn't I go overboard? <laughs> you did. Oh, you did good, baby. But look, thank you, sweetheart. He is not a warm fuzzy kind of guy, and so I would have never thought that he would be that that guy that would come after and me sweep like that. You off your feet. Oh my god. Well, I don't know about sweeping. But he came in he came with the right agenda. Cause you know I'm not that that chick that you know I'm too too mature for the sweep. You got to come with the bulldozer, baby. You know, you got to come with the show up. And he came with all of the right artillery. Yes. Yes, the the tank. So he said he's not the the little fluffy type of guy oh. that be doing all that. So but Mm-mm. so how did he win you over then? Just because by telling he, you being straightforward? Oh, yeah, be, being straightforward. It's like it wasn't a business deal, but it was right there. Yeah, it was time. right there. Okay? Because, you know, come on. When we are mature as women, yeah. we're not looking for a nice dinner. No. We can buy ourselves a nice dinner. Exactly. Yeah, I can buy myself clothes. <laughs> I can buy myself jewelry. But what I want is I want to be secured in my spiritual life, my social life, my uh, physical life, yep. and I'm not going to be no girlfriend. That is not what God called me to. <laughs> right. So he And he knew that. He recognized that. Like I said, he showed up. The husband showed up. The wife was there. Wait, how's it been working with him? Oh, so much. No, it's been interesting. <laughs> the first round that we had, I was writing for the Black History Honors show. I really enjoyed it because he is he really is a good person to work with. But I didn't know the level of detail that he would climb into. But that's how you become successful, yeah, you, you know, because yeah. if you cross the I, the T's and dot the I's, the rest mm-hmm. of the sentence will work out. <laughs> yeah. But if you leave things, you know, up to chance and he yeah. leaves nothing to chance, he is in all of the cracks and crevices. I just finished the production of the second Black in History Honors show. I was As in a that, producer. Oh, OK. More I was, so than just a writer. I was in the edit studio. And he's like on the phone. Hey, how's it going? Hey, what about this? Can you send me a rough? I'm like, okay. <laughs> but I love it. You know, so I, yeah, I love working with him. They say one of the greatest things that women um, love from man, and I heard a woman uh, DM me this stuff or whatever the other day, is when they're with a man that can teach them things. Mm-hmm. Is that true for you? Yes. If he couldn't take me anywhere, it would be no point in me being with him. <laughs> Oh, did was I too? <laughs> I was too honest about that. No, you know what? If 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 a man can't expand you, mm. and it, you know expand your horizons in some ways, then why are you with him? You know, I could stay. I could do what I'm doing. All you know, and I so mean, I'm not trying to be, ain't enough. No. Mm-mm. 
No, no, it's not. And for him, the same. <laughs> well, there no, Don, there, Don said he was lonely. Yeah, he wasn't just lonely. He was. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I I will not reiterate the proposal that he made to me. But he was like, you know, I love you. You're beautiful. Oh, I just think you're the just you're intelligent. You can work in the business. He was, I didn't that. And you can write. I said, stop, stop. <laughs> you, you're, well, that's important. you're messing up. He says important. Oh, he was look. He says important. He, it oh. ain't you just cute. He's like, okay, and I see this, this, and that. So it was a whole. No, that would just say you can write, you can well, work in the business. Well, you know, you have to. Sometimes that was the proposal. <laughs> Well, you you have to recognize those gifts because the circles that we're in, uh, I, I need a I needed a partner who can not just go and sit on a couch and watch what we're doing, but to to be able to uh, for me to uh, interact with 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 my mate when we're out to let her stand on her uh, own conversation, just yes. not about me, but what she's done because she has those. Those, uh, that history there, that's very important. And that's when what I noticed immediately that uh, she was, she's respected, she can do all of those things, uh, not just write, but express what the heck she's written. You know, and another thing is you don't want to compete. Yes. You know, because yeah. a lot you of times, you, exactly. Yeah. And a lot of times, um, you know, I would be in situations and, you know, because maybe people would recognize me or whatever or honor me. You know, you kind of got this little edge mm-hmm. later on, like, oh, yeah, they you think, think you, you are, all that because you over here. Yeah, you everybody go. else. Thank you. You're right. right. And then then I have even been in relationships where then they try to tear you down. Well, you ain't yep. all that. Yep. I was like, oh, but you need to think so. <laughs> but so, okay. <laughs> so, so you think you look good, huh? Right. Like, well, do you think I look good? Right. Because if you go try yes. and say, I think I look good, you should be the one confirming that right. I do. Um, and that's important. Instead of competing, you should compliment. Um, and that's that's profound. And what I love about it is what, so Don thinks like me. And a lot of women, they'll, you know, they'll talk to me and they'll just be misaligned with me. And they be like, well, so you want a woman that kind of does what you do? do? I said, I want a woman. <laughs> <laughs> that can feel the blind spots that I, that I don't have. Right. Amen. You know, that I have or whatnot. They be like, well, I mean, but why don't you be more open to what I said? That will lead to divorce. I know what I desire. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, I know what I desire. Why would I get somebody that don't even do nothing that is yes. important to me? Yes. yes. Right. That's, like, that's like sitting up here. And again, we're going to talk about football. And and you got the coach trying to look for a player. And they're going to get a basketball player. <laughs> you know, it's like, right. you be like but he's an athlete. Right, right. Mm-hmm. No, no makes sense. No. And so, and I say, if you're smart, if you're a man of wisdom, a man of leadership, you're going to choose the best partner to help you that's win this right. thing. That's right. And that's mm-hmm. what I love. I love that he's honest about it. I love that he sat there and even in the proposal. How long before the day, the day <laughs> from your first day and the day you proposed, how long was that? From February 7th of 2023. And we got married August 5th of 2023. You know, it don't take a long time to do nothing of this. At all. At all. Yeah. If you know what you're going to do, just do it. Facts. You know, and then you don't have to search around and and shop around and look around. and you Just make a decision. (laughs) You know, and I respect that. I really do. Did anybody tell y'all, y'all moving too fast? Uh, (laughs) Don't look over there. On my side, no, it was was my daughter uh, and it was my... (laughs) Uh, sister-in-law um, felt that why are you moving so fast? And um, I just said, you know, this is a God-inspired, and I don't see anything that would stop me from this. And we had a a great, great reception. Uh, we had to our uh, at the Stellar Awards. It was so so wonderful to show our uh, the gospel music industry. Who we were, they knew, and they came out. It was really exciting. Uh, and then uh, our wedding, of course, was great. And then back in Chicago to bring all of my friends together, uh, and they were just—I mean, we were overfilled with uh, the folks who came out and uh, just uh, felt our love, and and we felt their love. It was—it was just tremendous. It was surprising to me. 
I was like, dude, let's just go on down to the courthouse and get it done. You really want it like that? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. And, that's what it, and he says, oh, no. No, you can't you do know, that. Not with something this big. <laughs> well, no. you know, a lot of times, you know, as a woman, and I will say a woman of a certain age and stage, yeah, yeah. you look and you say, well, you know, that was for that's for 30-year-olds yeah. or whatever. And You look as a, a, a lot of unnecessary wasted money. Or well, not necessarily all the money. It was more so I didn't want to frou-frou up something that was spiritual. And, um, you know, and yet what happened was such a um, a blessing to so many other people. That's my point. I had so many women coming up to me saying, you are my shero. That's what I'm talking because about. Because you give me hope yes. that it's not too late. It's yes. never too late. And, you know, at this age of 67 years old, I just believe that God has not... See, he has not done the best with me that he's yet going to do. And now that I have this one yeah. that is backing me up, I'm like, you unstoppable. Oh, you unstoppable. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You unstoppable. <laughs> and he's letting you fly. He's not intimidated by you. He's like, right. baby, I need you to be great. Yeah. You know, because yeah. that's the confirmation. See, the Bible mm -hmm. says that a woman is a crown upon her husband's head. That's right. And what's so crazy about it is that you have these men that are mismanaging women, not realizing that's how you get your glory is through your wife. That's right. And so if you want to look, if you really want to yeah. be the man, yes. make your woman become everything that God called her to be. Cultivate that woman. And mm -hmm. then everybody be like, you got a bad woman. Yes. And mm -hmm. they ain't going to do nothing but look behind her and say, oh, because she got a bad dude behind yeah. her. That's it. And that's what it has to be. But so often we've seen it the other way around where the woman is uplifting the man she's putting yeah. her whole vision her purpose yes. you know putting it by the wayside and supporting him and then mm -hmm. she finds herself just she's tired drained drained because and one of the things that that i think we as women have to realize is that god positions us on purpose for a purpose in the life of a man i am not afraid to support him I'm not afraid to submit to him. Yes. And the submission is a beautiful thing because yes. it puts me in the right position. Yes. It positions me correctly. And when he honors that, it really makes the best of both of our worlds. So it's just a, it's, it's a blessing. Listen, my mission is to make this year's Stellar Awards the most, the highest attended Stellar Awards ever. I love ever. it. I love it. Um, and what I found like in the past is that, you know, the first Stellar Awards I ever went to was last year, the one I was actually invited to to do the podcast. <laughs> oh, wow. And so I was like, um, but because I don't think people know, well, since y'all created Stellar Plus, y'all are having wraparound events um, leading up to Stellar Awards is what's making it, you know, where it's more desirable desirable for other people that may not be in the industry and all that to right. say, oh, we can go and just have a good time. Yeah. And so I think that we need to, you know, um, not that I try to compare it to like the Essence Festival or whatnot, but I want it to be bigger than that. Yes. Um, I, I'm tired of Christian events to be the substandard version of secular right. events. Right. I want mm -hmm. us to be the standard. And I, that's one thing about Don Jackson He's all about excellence. Yes. And I so, see it. I saw it on that exactly. stage. And, and all of the glitz and the glam and all of that, it's not inexpensive. Oh, it it's is, not. It's an investment. Yeah. Right. But it showcases who we are and what we do in an amazing way where every other genre is out there in Vegas and all of these other places. And that stage that we have for the Stellars is is second to none. Oh, it's absolutely beautiful. And so this year, what's the date so we can get our our, our listeners and followers to come out? Uh, the taping is uh, July 18th. July the 18th. That's a Saturday. A Saturday. Mm -hmm. And it's going to have events leading up to it oh, from yeah. that Wednesday. For the whole week. And uh, um, what city? Las Vegas. We're in Vegas again, so we're going to yeah. be in Vegas we're again. We're going to turn the light on. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go ahead and turn that on in the city of darkness, and we're going to let the light shine. Um, how can people find out and purchase tickets for the event? Oh, it's simple. Just go to StellarTV.com. StellarTV.com. the activities will be there, the pre-activities that will show up, uh, the pre-show, the red carpet, uh, and the show, and the post-reception. All of it will be there. And, you know, we have kept our ticket prices moderate um, because the support we have, people don't realize it, uh, is uh, to support like the Grammys. It's not the attendance as much as it is 
the advertisers yep. who get behind you. Yep. So sometimes you want to uh, get the profit from both areas. We want to make as much of a profit, but we want to make it easier for our fans to come out and see it. And uh, so that's what uh, we're all about. Uh, we got some great new things coming up, yeah. uh, not just the Stellar Awards, but with our Black uh, Music Honors, which is coming up in May mm -hmm. uh, that we're taping. I in, think Atlanta. In, in Atlanta. In Atlanta. You know, the, somebody's home yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> state here. But I love Atlanta, not just for the weather. Uh -huh. uh, Teresa's family, it's been like a another young family for me. And uh, to not just come in and do a show and go back to Chicago. So, uh, so you said music honors, black, black, black music, music honors, yeah. and that's going to be so that's open to the public to purchase tickets to come to. Yes, it okay, is. Okay, good, mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. And so that comes up in May. Same. Uh, what what site do they find out about that? Stella TV. Stella TV. So, so Stella TV, TV is right. all things that y'all do. Well, yes, and we just launched Stellar TV. God has been tremendous. Uh, we're the first black owned uh, 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 network in uplifting faith-based entertainment. Good. All of the others, you know, we, we, we have, I've interacted with them until this past June and uh, 2023, where we were able to launch us as a network now. So we got a lot of things on our plate that's coming forth uh, that we know God has just wrapped his arms around what we're going to be doing. Teresa, I told Don, I said, I know you're one of those visionaries that people are like, gosh, you just keep coming up with ideas? <laughs> oh, right. yeah. It's like, can you just retire oh, yeah. and get somewhere and sit down? And he's like, no, nah, I got a new idea. That's you it. know, that's and I it. love that. That's what keeps life worth living. That's right. You know, as long as God keeps breath in y'all's body, mm -hmm. keep dreaming, keep envisioning things, and keep moving in purpose. And there it is. Yeah, yeah. Keep, keep doing it. And well, stepping out now. Yeah. You know, once they come, you can say, oh, <laughs> uh, I'm too busy, don't have time. We, but, you know, when the spirit uh, of ideas comes to you and you don't take the time, right? you just think about it, you know? But instead of just thinking about it, you need to step out Gotta on it, it some way, shape, or form. Yeah. Whether to get up and make a call, like I did when the spirit said, <laughs> Teresa, I got up, and I immediately... May, took a look, made the call, yeah. and made the contact. Uh, or you get up I mean, you, when the ideas come, you, you write it down. Yeah, you, you know which even or you know put it on your cell or or laptop. You 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 make some notes. Yeah, and these things will come to you, and then God just gives you uh, things that you may not even be expecting. Right, you know they just uh, suddenly appear in your life to even uh, make it. That you got the message, okay? You got it. God says you you're ready to step out on it. Here, here, here. I mean, it just opens up just like that. But you gotta, you know, be committed and step out on it. And uh, that's what we're doing. Listen, man, I can talk to y'all all day, and I don't want. I gotta go speak at this event, <laughs> but I just I, I should have moved this to later on this evening and did a whole two hour <laughs> interview with y'all. Cause gosh, it's just. I take it as such an honor to sit down. But, at the but you need wisdom. to keep doing what you're doing. We were with a couple last night that came into Chicago to fix my computer, and my printer was was off. And they said, "Well, where are you guys going? We're going to uh, we're, we're going to Dallas for this podcast, dear wifey." Dear wifey. Mm -hmm. And they said, "Oh, we know all about dear wifey." <laughs> I swear oh, yeah. to God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they so you keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. You know, mm -hmm. with the message out there for yes. us because we need Thank it. You. Thank so you. we mm -hmm. they knew about you. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and ask us about where are you guys going. And we said to Dallas, they said, Who are you going there for? A podcast. And and the dear wifey. And they said, Oh, we know all about that. Because they have started. Uh, uh, a podcast on couples. They really have. So I'm going to connect you with them. Good, good. You know, I, well. like, I like, uh, you know, mentoring folks like that. And what's mm -hmm. so cool about it, I never knew what I was creating when I was creating this mm -hmm. four years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm coming up on the four-year anniversary, wow. April the 15th, and grew from zero subscribers to, uh, you know, almost half a million. Wow. And, you know, and had no idea that it would be this. And then, um, you know, I'll be at the airport or whatnot, and people scream 
him across the terminal. I watch your podcast, <laughs> and I'm like, what? And like, and it just it just throws me off that God would sure. be so gracious. Yeah. Um, and I've been so transparent about how I mismanaged the heart of my ex wife, and then God is giving me beauty for ashes. Mm -hmm. You know, He's saying, hey, I know you did this, but you're a guy that operates in uh, not only resilience, mm -hmm. but um, to literally say, God, forgive me. Mm -hmm. And if you give me a second chance at love, I mm -hmm. promise you, I promise you, I am mm -hmm. going to adore that woman in ways that I've never, ever adored a woman go. in my life. And I will cultivate her into becoming everything that you have called her to be. Mm -hmm. And I will keep my ear tethered to your mouth, God, mm -hmm. so I can receive instructions, Amen. guidance, and wisdom on how to love her deeper. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And so, um, thank y'all. Thank y'all for Thank taking you. the time to sit down and talk to me on the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Hey, y'all give it up for the Jacksons, y'all. <laughs> Stay tuned to the end for a letter to my future wifey. Been writing these love letters to you. You wouldn't believe the honor that I feel having sat down with these two powerhouses, Don Jackson and Teresa Hairston Jackson. Such powerhouses. I've been a fan of their work, and I just love how um, they've used their life to be change agents and to celebrate others. Well, here's my favorite part of the podcast where I speak to my future wifey. Dear future wifey, as I sit here with pen in hand, my thoughts drift to you, my beloved, my future partner in life's grand adventure. There is a particular aspect of our journey together that fills me with, the, with both excitement and a deep sense of purpose. The prospect of combining our purposes into a singular, beautiful vision. In you, I see a kindred spirit, someone whose ambitions and dreams resonate with mine in ways that are both profound and inspiring. And as we stand on the threshold of life shared together, I can't help but feel a profound sense of gratitude for the opportunity to unite our individual purposes into something truly extraordinary. You see, my love, I believe that true fulfillment in life comes not only from pursuing our own dreams, but also from supporting each other in the pursuit of ours. But beyond the tangible achievements and successes, I also believe that our shared purpose lies in the everyday moments, the simple acts of love and kindness that define our relationship. Your future hubby. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit, live intentionally and transparently, and don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.